Pot Mulligan have invented post emo. They are most certainly an emo band from the Midwest, but are decidedly not a Midwest emo band. They formed in 2014, which is after emo's heyday. And since post means after, it's post emo. But this by itself isn't novel. There are many bands that have formed after pop punk and emo's time in the sun. But there's something special about Hot Mulligan. There's something different. So today, I want to look at their discography, videos, and live footage to determine what exactly makes them stand out. Hey, how's it going? My name is Dan Frampton. I really appreciate you clicking on to today's video to discuss the band Hot Mulligan. There's just something that I can't put my finger on, so I thought if we go through a whole bunch of stuff, we'll be able to determine what it is about Hot Mulligan that is so hot, fresh, cool and amazing. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's get to the video. This video is going to exist in about four parts, okay? We're going to talk about the records. We're going to talk about the videos. That means music videos, live footage, and interviews. We're going to talk about the merch, and then we're going to round home plate and have a conclusive answer as to what makes Hot Mulligan so different. So without any further ado, let's jump to 2014 and their debut EP, which is called Fenton. Now, one of the first things that I want to talk about this band is, yeah, they're all still in their 20s. They are all young boys, young whippersnappers, okay? Young bucks out there playing a style of music that you think would have died years prior to this. They kind of exist in that same sort of bubble as kind of like Joyce Manor, maybe a little bit of like modern baseball. They kind of have that sort of kind of like vibe to them, but it's a little bit different in today's day and age, and we'll get to that. But one of the cool things about this band is they don't seem to care about song titles. Their song titles are just like whatever. They don't even relate to the song most of the time. Sometimes it just seems like an inside joke between the band that they just name the song. They're like, who cares what the name of the song is? People are listening to the song or they're watching it live. They don't care about the name of the song, which is exactly my opinion about song titles, and most people consider that to be a hot take. All the big time hardcore fans, you know, and all the marketers, all the label people, they need a hook. They need like that catchy kind of like song title to sell to people but Hot Mulligan is not about that business and I absolutely love it. The first three songs that they put out were called 11 Second Burp, Buy a Fire Extinguisher Before You Need a Fire Extinguisher, and Visited Salmon. I mean, Transit Balcony. Like, what does any of that even mean? It doesn't relate to any of the songs. But this first EP, it's not really the hottest of mulligans yet, okay? It's all right. I rated this thing half a star, which means it's classified mid. But then we move on to 2015, and they put out another EP called Honest and Cunning, and these song titles are even funnier, all right? They got, I played Tony Hawk's ride once and it sucked. And then they have a song called Jimmy Neutron Had a Dog, So Why Can't I Have a Friend? And it's here where that signature hot mulligan vocal style is starting to develop. In the first EP, it doesn't sound like the hot mulligan that I know and love today, but now I can start to hear it. And the cool thing about this guy's vocals is that there's no vocals like it. No vocals like it in the past, no vocals like it today. This guy, I think his name is Nathan, he can go from clean to screaming so seamlessly, and that's kind of what they developed into their sound, okay? They go from this kind of whiny, emo type tone, and then to a scream, but like in the same kind of vocal line, and one kind of complements the other, but they didn't really hone that in this early on. They're just still starting to kind of play with the the idea of screaming in their songs, but I rated this EP three quarters of a star, which means it's classified pretty okay, I guess. And then we move on to their split with Everyone Leaves, which came out in 2016. Just a couple songs, nothing really to write home about. I gave this one one star. It's classified solid. And still here in 2016, they're putting out their most substantial project yet. 
It's still an EP, but it's called Opportunities, which I don't know if it's like an ironic name or whatever, because I think they were seeking opportunities. So I don't know if this was their way of manifesting opportunities out there in the music business, but they named this record Opportunities, okay? It had six songs. The first song is called If You Had Spun Out In Your Oldsmobile, This Probably Wouldn't Have Happened. It moves on to a song called The Hammer Guy Is At It Again. The biggest song on this record is called Dairy. It doesn't have an I, it's just D-A-R-Y. I think that might be like a place or whatever. It has like 8 million spins on Spotify. And then my favorite song on this thing is called I Replied to Tyler with Three Blue Cars. That's an amazing title. I don't know what the hell it means, but he probably replied to somebody in a text or whatever with three blue cars, said it out loud, and then in the studio someone was like, we're gonna name a song that, and then they just named this song that. But it's on this EP we start to hear the guitar work improving to such a like a drastic degree. The songwriting and vocals are starting to actually gel. Their identity is starting to form and I think they're starting to realize what ingredients they have to cook with to make them sound like hot mulligan. But whatever they were doing in those EPs got them enough attention where they in 2018 put out their first full length and they cleverly called it Pilot. And this is where I say that the LP era begins. Yes, an emo pop punk band LP era beginning in the year 2018. These guys are truly the number one hot fresh young band. The best song titles on this are All I Wanted by Michelle Branch. The soundtrack to a missing slam dunk. Pluto was never really a planet either even. Whispers, thank you. How do you know it's not armadillo shells? That's a very good question that they pose. They're really starting to find their identity. Their sound is starting to sharpen up here and those vocals are really beginning to cook. This record is getting rated 1.25, which might seem a little bit low, but it is actually classified sick. If you don't know about my rating system, it is a two star rating system, but there are 11 possible ratings that fall within that two star rating system. It isn't just one or two stars. As you see here, there's quarter stars involved and there are trash and beyond trash tiers as well. You add all that up, you get 11 possible ratings, okay? And then we move on to the record that I think broke this band, okay? This record blew this band up into like the mainstream of pop punk emo, whatever that is in the year 2020, okay? This record was called You'll Be Fine. And I remember sitting back and just being like, what am I listening to? This is crazy. What, what What is this guy's voice doing? What are these guys' guitars doing? These guys are writing these kinds of songs today, and it was here. I was like, they're even pushing this stuff forward. This isn't the standard emo that I know. This isn't the post-hardcore that I know from the past. This isn't even Midwest emo that I've grown to know and love. This is something completely different. This didn't even feel like sad boy pop punk. This didn't feel like modern baseball. This started to feel like something completely different right away to me right here. And it wasn't until I listened to the entire discography that I realized that this is when it all started to click for the band in like real time as well. The vocal style nailed. The riff style nailed. The lyrics, songwriting, all the tones and production crisp clean, deliberate, everything with purpose, absolutely top shelf, okay? Their identity is 100% ironed out at this point, and there's only one track on here that docks it those stars, and that's the song SPS, all right? Soggy Piss Stickers, which is a great name for a song. It's not getting docked for that, but it's just like, honestly, their only song that they've ever released that I just don't like. I think this thing is not a good song. Well, I don't know what to say. But overall, you'll be fine. I gave a 1.5, all right? It's classified top shelf. After that, they put out an EP in 2021 that I'm not gonna get too much into, but this is when Wax Bodega got their claws into this band, and they released this EP called I Won't Reach Out To You, which I gave 1.25. You know, it's classified pretty sick. Five songs, pretty good if you're a completist out there, but not really something you should run to if you're looking for a starter pack to this band. But this record that I'm about to talk about is the record to start with, because it came out this year. It's called Why Would I Watch 2023 Wax Bodega, 12 songs, every single one of them a banger, every single one of them an instant classic, okay? The melodies and vocal lines are on another level. Absolutely everything about this record is just hot 
mulligan. They are firing on all cylinders. You name the cliche about being really good at something and they are doing it, okay? They are being really, 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 really good at this. And you talk about inventing stuff. They're out here inventing post-emo on this record. I don't know how else to describe it. It, it, it. It's definitely emo, but it's definitely after emo, and it's definitely 100% their thing. And back in the day, like bands did not want to be classified as emo. They were like anything but that, you know what I mean? All the way back to bands like Jawbreaker, and even bands like Fall Out Boy and My Chemical Romance. They're like, no, we're not, we're not emo. Don't, don't even do that. What are you talking about? No way, no way. And it wasn't until like, I don't know, almost the 2010s, where the term emo was actually embraced by the people that were actually emo. So then to see it go full circle and beyond on this record is just super refreshing. I absolutely love it. Of course, I gave this thing a perfect score, two full stars. But I want to point you into the direction of a couple other things if you're looking for a starter pack to get into Hot Mulligan. All right. Now the first thing I want to show you over here is this live video that they did live from the basement from over a year ago and this song that they're playing here that I, that I have muted is actually a cover of Bleed American by Jimmy Eat World and not only do they do this song justice they absolutely kill it they put their own little spin on it and it makes you know that they're just like a continuation of that lineage you know and this whole set is unbelievable what a tight as hell band that's why they don't care about song titles they care about uh, performances they care about skill they care about being good at the instruments they care about their performance as a unit you know what I mean how tight they are and how good they sound those are the things that people should be worried about when they're in a band how tight they are how good it sounds you know what I mean and they're out there with those things top of mind and it's clear to me that these guys are like the best band going right now and another reason why you might see these guys as a total Dan Frampton type band is this music video they have for this song Gans Media Retro Games all right now this video sees the band all becoming professional wrestlers okay they're going for the hot mulligan world championship and also performing as the as the wrestlers but also as a band it's very fun it's very cool it's one million percent down my alley like this is the kind of thing that's like tailor-made for me all right this is the kind of stuff that just sings to my soul i absolutely love it i couldn't even imagine giving this thing less than two stars it's almost breaking the scale i almost got to go beyond two stars but I'm, I'm never gonna do that I did that once I'm not gonna break the scale over here but you gotta know that this and this are amazing and one other thing that you got to check out if you want to check out their entire vibe is this interview that they did with Neo Punk FM all right they're out here sporting the post emo shirt it's kind of like a whole ironic unironic kind of thing but this video over here gives you the entire sense of their personality look at it he's just wearing a shirt with a bunch of different kinds of bread on it uh, this guy's got a, a shirt with Shawn Michaels on it bunch of wrestling fans bunch of bread enthusiasts you got to enjoy that you got to enjoy that so much and also I gotta say that you don't expect the vocalist to look the way that the, the vocalist looks like over here, over here, it might look like this guy here in this sweater here is the main vocalist, but that's not the case, all right? It's this bearded gentleman over here that has those amazing vocal chops that they couldn't be Hot Mulligan without, all right? This Nathan character. This guy here over here, this guy with the, uh, the Hot Mulligan shirt, which is something that normally the punk scene looks down on when you wear your own band shirt. But for some reason, these guys' riz is just through the roof so much that they get away with it. That even so much when this guy with the fleece on takes his fleece off, he's got a Hot Mulligan shirt on, and you're like, all right, that's, that's fine, that's cool. Kind breaking a bunch of punk rock rules you should be wearing other band shirts to put out over other bands but that's okay that's neither here nor there this is them all sitting down on their website and this does not look like an emo band all right this this might look like kind of just like a I don't know an alternative rock outfit kind of thing I don't know me but not a Midwest inspired emo outfit all right but while we're here we might as well take a look at their merchandise and while we take a look at their merchandise I think we're gonna realize one thing yep they have the best merchandise in the world all right they got this attitude era wrestling style crop top that you can also get as a beer koozie this wrestling inspired t-shirt with the band members as 
uh, their wrestlers from that video. Very cool. This amazing hoodie that I would love to own. You know what I mean? It's got the Santa Cruz kind of parody logo on the back. Amazing stuff. But this thing over here, you know I like a neon monster. Goddamn, number one hot new band, Hot Mulligan. This might have to be in my purchasing cart very, very, very soon, all right? So they got their merch game on point. They know exactly the kind of band that they are. So now to the conclusion. The reason why Hot Mulligan doesn't feel like a pop punk band is because they're not a pop punk band. But here are the reasons they're not like any other band that came before them. The first thing I gotta mention is that vocal style. It is 100% unique and identifiable as Hot Mulligan. The song titles that don't match the song, that whole thing, that whole aesthetic, you know what I mean? That's totally them. And ironically, it turns the song titles from something that isn't important to something that is like a focal point of conversation, you know what I mean? And like a window into the soul of the band, all right? Another thing I gotta mention is their look. Look, they don't look like an emo band. They don't look like a pop punk band. They're so unassuming looking and then just nail the genre better than anyone has ever done before them. It's given really big Bob Dylan vibes, you know? Not in sound or aesthetic, but Bob Dylan didn't look like he was going to be the voice of a generation folk superstar that he turned into be. That's all I'm saying. And they're improving every time they release something all the way up until 2023. Normally, pop punk bands, emo bands, bands in this kind of, I don't know, style, they kind of get worse as time goes on. But these guys are a new band rather than an aging band. And they're still getting better and better and better because they're still super young dudes, all right? There's still so much time for these guys to fall off. But now they're at the very, very tippy top. And that'll about do it, all right? Thank you so much for watching. Also, huge thanks to my channel members on this graphic right here. If you wanna be on this graphic right here, all you gotta do is go down there, hit that join button, become a member, get access to exclusive content, and get your name on this graphic here. Oh, I forgot to mention, you also get exclusive emojis. And did I also mention this thing that there's also this graphic over here that you might want to get your name on? <laughs> okay, you can go down there and hit that join button right now. I am in love with Hot Mulligan. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. I hope you enjoy Hot Mulligan too. If not, and you still watch this entire video, that's pretty sick as well. Um, all right, uh, I'm going to get out of here. See you later. <laughs>